You get to go around the mountain. Live in your miserable state for a few more weeks, or another week, or another day, or another whatever. You get back around, there's a test. God says, will you obey me? It's up to you. Yes or no? No, I don't think I'm quite ready. All right, take another lap. That's all the test God has is one test. Will you do what I tell you to do? That's all He's interested in. It isn't a difficult thing. But yet I hear preachers, I hear ministers, I hear, I hear the body of Christ telling people, oh, God's trying me. God's testing me. He put this on me to see if I could handle it. Are you kidding me? My God. Are you crazy? You lost your mind? Mm -hmm. How do you know God knows everything about you? He knows you better than you know yourself. He knows your weakness. He knows your strength. He knows what you're going to do, what you're not going to do. He doesn't put anything on you. He knows what you can take, what you can't take. That's right. Think with me just a second. People say, well, you know, God allowed this sickness to come on me. He's teaching me something. Yeah. Talk to me for a minute. Okay, if God allowed sickness to come on you, teach you something. Why are you going to the doctor and get the medicine and try to get rid of it? Get rid of the doctor. Stop going. Stop taking that medicine. Yeah. God's testing me in this. Mm -hmm. You kidding me? See, that is stupid in the natural. <laughs> Much less in the spirit. That is pure yeah. stupid in the natural. Yeah. I mean, you tell somebody in the world, they look at you and say, you're an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. But yet, there, this is being taught in the church all over the United States, around the world. And people are buying this bunk and this garbage, and they, they got all kinds of sickness and disease in their life. Their lives are falling apart. They're wondering, oh God, please take this off of me. He already has. Yes. Jesus took those stripes 2,000 yes. years ago where you can be healed right now. Amen. The price has already been paid. You just got to come to a place where you believe it, you receive it, and start acting on it. That's right. So with prosperity. There's a lot of people right now in our economy struggling, hurting. My wife and I have even been on some attacks in those areas. But you know, we got the victory, man. We're not giving into that trash. That's right. Why? Because God said He'd be all my needs. That's right. Listen, where well, your fathers tested me, tried me, saw my works 40 years. Therefore, I was angry with that generation and said, They always go astray in their heart. Everybody say, In their heart. In their in heart. heart. And they have not known my ways. Now, I'm not going to go to it. And I've told everybody, it's right in your Bible, right there, right beside that Psalms 103, verse 7. Psalms 103, verse 7 says that Moses, God showed His ways to Moses, His acts to His children. Have you know, I want to know His ways. Yeah. Not just His acts. Yeah. Sure, I want to see His acts. I want to see the miracles. I want to see the supernatural things. But I'm here to tell you, I want to know what motivates God. Yeah. I want to know what drives Him to do what He does. Amen? Yes. Come on. Amen. So I swore to my wrath, I'll not enter my rest. Beware, brother, lest there be in any of you an evil heart. Everybody say evil heart. Evil, evil heart. heart. Of unbelief and departing from the living God. But exhort or encourage one another daily while it is called today. Lest any of you be hardened. Everybody say hardened. 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 Through what? Through the deceitfulness of sin. Through the deceitfulness of sin. What does sin do? Sin. It hardens your heart. Yeah. And when your heart is hard, he's not talking about your pump. It's pumping blood through your body. He's talking about your spirit. When right. the word hard in the King James, he's talking about your spirit. Right. When your spirit's hardened, you can't hear the voice of God. Right. That's the reason he wants your, soft, your heart soft. He wants you sensitive. I mean, you know, that's not going to happen if you don't speak all the time with it. Yeah. Uh, hey, you know, there's four basic things we got to get back to. Everybody say four basics. Four basics. Four basics. Prayer. Pray. 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 Stay in the Word. Stay in the Word. That's vital. Going to church. Yes. yes. Hey, you know, there's something about when a group of people come together and believe in God together as a corporate anointing. Yes. Yes. Number four, tithe and offerings. Basics. Everybody say basics. 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 Those are all basic things. That sets you up to hear the voice of God. Then when you're set up to hear the voice of God, you start talking to him, you start carrying out what he's saying, and there'll be a bountiful blessings in your life. Amen. Amen. Yes. Go with me tonight. Because tonight we're going to talk about something a little different. Acts the second chapter. I've got about 20, 25 minutes here, so you guys better strap in and get ready because we're fixing to get into some stuff here. We talked about God speaks through your inner man, through the spirit man. He talks to you audibly, but he also talks through his word. Tonight we're going to talk about for a few minutes, he talks through prophecy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's still prophets in the earth today. Yeah. That's right. I know most religious denominations tell you, oh no, they all passed away. Well, that's funny. I guess all pastors passed away too. Mm -hmm. 
Um, have you know Jesus same yesterday, today, and forever? Yes. There's still apostles, there's still prophets, there's still yes. pastors, there's still evangelists, there's still teachers. Yes. And that's the fivefold ministry, and they will be here until Jesus catches up the church. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. After the church is caught up, they're going to be the greatest revival the world's ever known, and there will still be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Yeah. There'll be two prophets during the last part of the tribulation period that'll be preaching against the Antichrist all the way through the last three and a half years of tribulation. Well, almost the last three and a half years of tribulation. In the last three and a half days of tribulation period, they, they're killed and laid in the street for three and a half days. In the last day of tribulation period, they're caught up. Right. I wish I had time to go to all that, but <laughs> Acts, second chapter, verse 17. It shall come to pass in the last days. Everybody say last days. The last right. days. Says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall what? Prophesy. prophesy. Everybody say prophesy. Prophesy. How do you know a lot of people don't like prophecy? How do you know a lot of people don't like people to prophesy? That's right. How do you know there's some churches in the denomination you want to prophesy and the ushers will have a hold of you and you're going out the front door like That's real right. bad. You're not going to be in there very long. That's right. But how many you know that's not scriptural? New Testament says there'll be prophets. There'll be prophecies. 1 Corinthians 14. Let's go there. Is this okay? Yes. We take a few minutes here and look at the Word. Everybody say, let's look at the Word. Let's look at the Word. I mean, if I can't prove something to you through the Word, don't believe what I'm saying. That's right. Bottom line. 1 Corinthians 14. Pursue love. Well, let's read 13, 13. And now abides faith, hope, and love. These three, but the greatest of these is what? Uh, Why is love the greatest? God is love. Thank you. God is love. How do you believe God operates in faith? Yes. Of course He does. And He has hope. That's the reason you and I have. Where'd you get your faith from? Everybody's all. You got it from God. Right. You couldn't have got faith unless you got it from God. That's right. That's right. Romans twelve three says He has given every man a measure of faith. Yes. Amen. Now, when you're first born, you have a measure of faith to get born again. Mm -hmm. Then, once you get born again and come to know Jesus, there's faith comes alive on the inside of you, and you have to exercise it like a muscle where it'll grow. Yeah. You should actually be exercising your faith every day of your life. Yes. You should be believing God for you. But how do you know most people aren't believing God for anything? They're just believing get through to Friday and get their paycheck. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Am I being honest? Yes, you are. Think with me. Why shouldn't we be thinking, man, I, Lord, since somebody crossed my path this today, where I can witness to him, I can talk to him about Jesus. Or since somebody crossed my path, I can lay hands on him. I just believe you to heal somebody today, Lord. That's right. Why shouldn't we think that? Shouldn't we be thinking that way? Yes, we yeah. should. How are we going to evangelize the world if we are ashamed of the gospel and we won't even mm -hmm. talk to anybody about Jesus? Come on. Or they look at us and say, man, that guy's so worthy, I wouldn't bother him. He's just <laughs> like the world. He ain't no better than I am. <laughs> anybody in here? Amen. Yeah. How many of people are watching you? Yes, they are. If you tell people I'm a Christian, people watch you. Oh, they're watching oh, yeah. you. Yeah. See how you react to things. Yeah. How many just wait if you make a mistake? Yeah. <laughs> you let something slip out that shouldn't have came out? And then they'll look at you and say, I thought you was a Christian. Yeah. Well, I am. It didn't mean I'm perfect just because I'm a Christian. Amen. I can still make mistakes just like everybody else. That's right. Amen. Amen. Yes. The only difference is I got forgiveness. Mm -hmm. 1 Corinthians 14 1. Pursue love and desire spiritual. Now notice the word gifts there because the word gifts is italicized, so that wasn't in the original translation. Pursue love and desire to be spiritual. But especially that you may... Prophesize. May what? Prophesize. What are you supposed to be desiring? Prophesize. That you can prophesy. Now I know most of the denominations are talking, well yeah, that's talking about preaching. Well that is part of it. Preaching is part of it. But I mean, this is talking about the gift of prophecy. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is prophets that operate in prophetic words speaking into people's lives. I know this has happened in my life. I would get up and, and the Lord would speak something in my spirit and I would prophesy, you know, there's something, you know, bad fixing to happen, blah, 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 whatever, and people are like, what? What's he saying? Stuff like that for me. And then next week you get up and you prophesy, man, there's a great awakening, there's a great blessing that's about to come upon the church. See what people didn't understand? One, the first prophecy, he's telling what's coming to the world. Right. The second one, he's speaking what's coming to the church. Right. So you've got to understand, God's, He'll tell you what's coming on the earth. 
Will you be prepared to be ready? Amen. Would you be set up and be prepared before He comes? And I'm telling you folks, listen to me. Look at me. Look at these eyes. I'm not lying to you. There's a shaking going on. Yes. It's going to get worse for the world. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I mean, there's a blessing. Yes. There's an outpouring. There's a covering that's coming for the church yes. like yes. you've never seen. Yes. Hear me and hear me good. There's an anointing coming so strong in the very near future. It's already started in places. He's coming so strong. He's going to be just like with Peter when he walked down the street. If people would get close enough to his shadow, they'd be healed because of the power of the anointing of God. That is about to happen in a supernatural way like you have never dreamed before. That's right. I believe that. But it's coming to those that are separating themselves from the things of the world that's really turned on to Jesus and hungry for the things of God. Amen. Hey, no God can use a drunk to preach the gospel. Amen. Now, it's not because a man or a woman is perfect that these things happen in your life. It's because of the Spirit of God and the Word that's being taught and preached. Because God watches over His Word and perform it according to Isaiah 55, right. verses 10 and 11. That's right. Just because a man or a woman of God is used supernaturally by God, many people are. They don't mean they're perfect. They still, man, they still are living in a body just like you and I. Yes, they've separated themselves from the things of the world, but they still have a physical body. They still have things to deal with. Yeah. You know, anybody ever heard of R.W. Shambach? Yes. Great man of God. Man, I saw him one time at Word of Faith years ago, and, and this lady's in a wheelchair, and she'd been coming for, I don't know, weeks in a wheelchair. R.W. Shambach in a meeting on a Sunday night. He went over and laid hands on this lady. This lady came out of a wheelchair and started walking. As far as I know, she never went back to the wheelchair. That's the power of God. Yes, it yes. is. But having those several years later, R. W. Shemok had to have open heart surgery. Right. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying, having know that power was resident upon him and within him, and it was flowing out of him, and people's lives were being touched and changed and transformed. But yet he had a condition he had to deal with right. in his own body. Right. Because we have natural bodies. That's right. And I mean, you know, that's not God's best. No, it's not. I mean, we should be talking to our arteries every day. Amen. Yes. Are you clean, you're pure, blood flows to you just like you're supposed to. I speak about organs. Organs, you're blessed of God. You flow and operate like you're supposed to. Amen. People say, well, that's crazy. Yeah. All right, well, I haven't been in the hospital. Well, I went to the hospital with my brother and I. We had an accident in 2007, January 2nd. Satan tried to kill us, but other than that, he put uh, three staples in my head. And other than that, I haven't been in the hospital since. And I don't, I don't need to go to the hospital. Amen. I don't take any kind of drugs. I don't take any kind of medication. I'm not any kind of prescription. I talk to my body every day. Yes. Right. I say, no sickness, no plague comes down on me. That's right. And I'm not dwelling. Do you believe it? Amen. You don't wait until you go to the doctor. And I said, oh, man, I got bad news. You know, you got cancer. You got six months to live. And then you go, oh, I'm going to get my body like I'm going to believe God. No, you better start right now. Yes. yes. Thank you don't wait till bad times come to think you're going to get faith. Because most of those people end up dead. That's right. Thank Can I seriously you. Is this okay? The road I'm going down for a minute? I've been to the hospital with people I love, man. I'm talking about people I love. They were in churches we pastored. Precious people. Good people. Love God. Women that can pray and just, I mean, literally just shake the foundation, man. And I'd go in the hospital and they had something wrong with them, something bad. And instead of them believing in God and have the Word going on or something, they're sitting there watching some stupid okay. soap opera or something yeah. on television. I'm like, yeah. mm -hmm. Amen. This ain't going to work. That's right. I tell you what, Satan, he'll try to work on you 24-7. Yes, he will. You better be working on him 24-7. Amen. Yes. Mm -hmm. And everybody's like, oh, come on, man. You're just too religious. You're too. That's good. You just try to want us to do too much. Okay, well keep living like you are. If you're blessed, getting results, keep doing what you're doing. Amen. I'm not trying to talk you out of it. I mean, you want to keep doing what 